Hey guys, it's Tom Camp from Digital Recording School, where artists, producers, and engineers go to learn how to achieve radio-ready recordings. So it's no secret that I'm a really big fan of uh, Sonarworks. And if you're not a fan of what Sonarworks is, is it's a plugin that applies a EQ curve to the output of your system to flatten out the frequency response of your headphones. So this kind of helps with uh, making more um, clear mix decisions and stuff like that so that um, you know, you're just listening on a more flat system. Now the way most people use Sonarworks is they go on their master fader and they add the plug in right here. And then if you hit play, turn it off, changes the sound a little bit. It applies this EQ curve. Uh, this is my correction curve, so you see um, the green line. It boosted 6 dB of low frequencies. It pulled out a little bit of these low mids. And you just see it kind of almost looks like a DNA strand here because it's, it's boosting um, and cutting just to give me a more flat response. So I'm able to kind of mix better, better using this plugin. But where this plugin doesn't help me, and this is where I've been getting a lot of questions lately, is on reference tracks. So if I'm referencing a mix, you know, I might be referencing it online, I might be referencing it in Spotify, or I might be referencing it in iTunes. If I start referencing my mix outside of Pro Tools, or your DAW with this on my master fader, my references are not going to have this EQ curve applied. So essentially, it would be the same thing as every time, imagine you had two sets of monitors, and every time you switch to your reference, you change the speakers. So that would be a complete uphill battle, and uh, for those of you who are mixing with Sonarworks and who are doing it that way and are wondering why your mixes aren't you know, as closely matching your references, this could be a, a problem. So what I do is I bought uh, Audio Hijack, and I love this plugin, or this program. It's a, I think it's an Apple program. And what Audio Hijack is, is you should essentially just visualize this as a gigantic digital patch bay. So you're patching input into things, and then you're patching from there to your output. So what I'll do is there's a couple of ways that you can do this. I'll either take my system audio, uh, or my application. I like to do application because I like to kind of split things up. So with my application, I'll select Pro Tools. And then I'm going to grab my um, Sonarworks plugin. And all of your plugins are here. So I'm essentially taking my Sonarworks plugin. I'm putting it after my input, making sure it's turned on. And then I'm grabbing my output and my and I'm going here, I'm selecting my output device, and there we go. So, essentially, it's, it's no different than if you were to think about this in this, in, you know, in the Pro Tools world. You're just taking things and you're kind of moving digital cables all over the place. If you can kind of visualize that, it, it helps. So, now, I'm essentially just, by putting the Sonar Reference 3, I pretty much just put it here. It's just on the Master Fader of my Pro Tools. But that's not all I want it to go through. So I'm going to select application and see it's almost giving me that digital cable again. We can kind of kind of see that uh, visualization there. And I'm going to go to Spotify. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to turn this off for a second, make sure it's working. Good on. All right, perfect. So now I have my reference loaded in from Spotify and I'm in Pro Tools. So now I can go in Pro Tools, I can hit play. Simultaneously hit play. It looks good uh, on that start and stop on my Apple no keyboard. I'm going back to my spacebar on Pro Tools. So this really, really helps when I'm doing referencing. Um, furthermore, what I what I'll even do sometimes is, you know, I might be mixing the song and I might be, you know, man, my uh, my mids are just like not not doing good or my low end. I really want to focus on that. I'll grab uh, my Fab Filter Pro Q. And I'll put an EQ curve uh, that I want. Like maybe I don't want to hear my lows, you know, or maybe some, sometimes I'll even do this. Um, this is essentially something similar to if you were to, you know, mix on an Aventone. Uh, I mix on mix cubes uh, for a while. So I really like, you know, rolling off all of the lows, kind of rolling off, you know, the highs and then being able to focus on all my mid range. So now I can um, turn that on and hit my play. And, and I'm good. 
So I'm I'm hearing all of that rolled off. And see, I can I can even roll it higher if I wanted to do it. So, yeah, so it's pretty cool because now I can sit there and I can just, you know, focus on certain areas and match my references that way. So I really recommend the Sonarworks and Audio Hijack combo. It's really helped me to be able to, when I'm traveling, uh, be able to mix because, you know, mixing remotely is cool. It's, it's really awesome, but it does come with some limitations, and this is just one of the ways that I kind of uh, get around those limitations. So I hope this helps. If you guys have any questions, just uh, drop a comment below. Thanks.